welcome everybody to today's uh, College of Arts, CAS Campus Connections, we call it, um, for the College of Arts and Sciences. My name is Yasmeen Perkins. I am the graduate admissions counselor for the College of Arts and Sciences. And usually I have my partner in crime, the Dean of the College, Dean Spencer, with me. So she couldn't join us today, but it's okay. We've got the Office of the Bursar with us. We have a special guest, uh, Mr. Mike Gosnell. He is the Bursar uh, here at University of Baltimore. So today we're going to talk to him a little bit about what the Bursar does, who is the Bursar, why you really need to use them here at University of Baltimore and how they can be, their office can be a, a benefit to you. As always with all of our conversations, feel free to type your questions in the chat box. This conversation will be uploaded to YouTube for all the world to see. So we totally understand if you do not want to be on camera, you certainly don't have to, but we wanna make sure that you do mute your phones uh, so that when we record this conversation uh, that others are not disturbed by it. So without further ado, welcome Mike to our Cast Campus Conversations. This is actually our last one almost. All right, I made it. I made it before it was over. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks for uh, inviting us in. Uh, you know, we're definitely, can, we like to think of ourselves as an important part of your um, academic conversation. And uh, one thing that I definitely hear repeated over and over in um, leadership circles at the University of Baltimore is that student finance is definitely a piece of overall student success. We want people to see their degrees and we want them to be academically strong, but we want you to do that in a way that is not um, damaging to you financially. We want to help you along the way so that you are um, just, you know, doing things smartly um, and doing them in a way that is um, to the best of your benefit and success so that you leave not only with a degree, um, but in great standing, uh, financially speaking. So um, to give you a little bit of overview, because nobody ever knows what the word bursar means, um, <laughs> it's, it's an old fashioned word, I guess, but um, you know, think of it as your student finances. Um, it is different than financial aid. However, we're like family, bursar and financial aid. Um, birth, think of it as uh, financial aid gives and the bursar office collects. So um, um, that's a great but, way to put it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we give and take, right? But, um, you know, we at the, at the bursar's office, we have um, the great opportunity to offer different types of vehicles so that we can make your financial part more palatable. So um, there's definitely students who are entirely covered by financial aid. There's some who um, get no financial aid and, and they're responsible for tuition themselves. And then we got a, a great bunch of people who are somewhere in the middle. They get some scholarships and they're responsible for some of the financial aid out of pocket. So, um, you know, the bursar office oversees tuition payment plans, for example. Um, and let me take a minute to tell you about those. We, we use a vendor that's named CashNet. Um, and we have set up the payment plan so that the earlier you take advantage of a payment plan, the longer you have to uh, pay off your, your tuition. So, uh, for example, anybody who had signed up for a payment plan uh, prior to July the 20th, which was just, what, a week ago, um, had five months to figure out how to, uh, five months to spread across their fall semester payment plan. So currently we have a four month payment plan out there and we'll extend it all the way until you know, I think it's mid-September, right, September 20th. So if you had um, misunderstood your financial aid package or just slept through the entire thing, there was still a last minute opportunity to jump into a payment plan um, in mid-September, but that one would only be for three months. Um, the payment so, plan- Mike, I have, a, yes, I, have a, I have a question. Could you yeah. share with us, a lot of our students are just getting admitted last week. So can okay. you speak to the students who are just ad recently admitted um, yeah. within the last two weeks, what they're gonna see on their portal and like they're probably gonna see a bill. Can you explain what those next steps should be for them? Absolutely. So I'm assuming that we capture in that, yes, I mean that uh, that first step included that they've been enrolled. That's step number one. You want to get yourself enrolled. You have to get enrolled to get a bill. So uh, once you have enrolled for your fall classes, a bill will be generated, and that's on your student portal under my UB, uh, the Student Service Center, very top upper left hand side. Uh, and that's like your student homepage is the my student or student service center. Uh, and the very top of that student service center, you'll see your academic uh, schedule, what you've enrolled for for the semester. And right below that there is the My Finances tab. 
And within that tab is where you'll find, sorry about that, you'll find your uh, uh, electronic bills. So the University of Baltimore doesn't mail paper bills, everything's electronic. Your e-bills are within that section. Um, in that section, you'll find the link for the payment plan I was just talking about. Um, there's also a portion there that you would want to uh, check. It's called my anticipated aid, and that would be where you would find what financial aid um, you are eligible for um, if you have filed the FAFSA. And I should back up and say, if you've not already done that, uh, you've got to file the FAFSA. Even if you think you don't qualify for anything, I encourage you to file the FAFSA anyway. So sometimes um, maybe you don't, um, um, maybe you're not eligible for anything federally speaking, but UB might be able to help you out. And then a lot of times um, you have had to have filed the FAFSA for UB to help you out. They need to understand what your position is. So please, if you've not done it, file the FAFSA. The, if you are, um, if you've been in higher ed and maybe you've stepped out for a while, the website changed. It used to be fafsa.gov and now it is studentaid.gov. Uh, it's a free application. Don't be fooled by, um, there's fake things out there that want you to pay. It's, it should be free and um, it requires uh, your 2018 tax returns. So they're looking at two years in, in the rears for your tax information. Um, so yeah, right there, I think Yasmin, I covered it right there in the, it's, it's called the My, My UB and in the upper left hand, it's the Student Service Center. And you'll find both bursar information and um, your, some of your financial aid information in there as well. Um, yes, that's, thanks that's Mike. That's literally your go-to throughout the year, you know, you get into taxes, 1098s, it's in the same area. It's, that's like your little bubble for um, the bursar, bursar world. Thanks for that clarity. I appreciate yeah. it because so many students get so confused like, oh, I saw my bill. I don't understand what this means or they might see that the, they, they have to set up a payment plan, but they haven't seen their financial aid awarded. So they get a little confused mm -hmm. about how the process works. So thanks so much for updating everyone and making sure that they know where to find that information. And of course, encouraging everyone to submit the FAFSA no matter what, because circumstances yeah. and situations could change. So there could be uh, eligibility for them. Absolutely. especially at the undergrad level. Absolutely. A perfect example of that, and, I, and you know, I'm, I don't work in financial aid, so I hope I'm not misspeaking, but a lot of the CARES grant opportunities that came out in light of COVID um, are both uh, federal, and then we've had um, sponsors um, make contributions to UB to help our student body out during this time of, you know, of crisis, really. It's people are in, in dire straits in some instances. And they're relying on information off the FAFSA to identify who, who it is that needs help. So please fill that out if you have not done so already.